This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. The city of San Diego has confirmed four deaths at homeless sleeping sites since the initiative launched in June of last year. The causes of death remain unknown. Those deaths happened as the city is expanding multiple housing options for people experiencing homelessness. The city says the safety and well-being of San Diegans living at these sites is the program's number one priority. They're working to show people the sites are one of many good options to keep people safe and off the streets. President and CEO of nonprofit organizations serving seniors says this is why making sure every aspect of these programs work is important. What's critical, whether it's a safe sleeping site, whether it's a tent site like Lot O that the city is, is running, you need services, you need intervention, you, you need to be checking on people regularly. You're not going to prevent every death, but it's pretty key that you have to have that wraparound service uh, with the intent of trying to find a permanent solution. In a statement to NBC7, Dreams for Change, which operates many of the city's safe sleeping sites where the deaths have happened, says our focus remains on doing everything we can to prevent such incidents and ensure the safety of our participants. Time has run out for hundreds of flood victims staying, uh, staying Sandy in San Diego hotels. Last month, the county extended the emergency temporary lodging program, you may recall, until May 11th. But not everyone qualifies for the extended stay. NBC7's Audra Stafford explains why many must be out by today. Earlier this month, the county sent out notices to some people staying here at the Ramada as well as other hotels throughout the county, letting them know that they are no longer eligible to continue in the county's temporary lodging program. They told them why that was, gave them seven days to fix it or find somewhere else to stay. Uh, don't know what we're going to do next, you know? Just let us know when it rains, it pours. <laughs> you know, so be prepared. Gabe Flores and Willie Allen, who you just heard from, are two of those who received notices here at the Ramada. The county says it has supported hundreds of households at 65 hotels, including this one, since the emergency temporary lodging program began, and that they regularly inform them of their status in the program and what they need to do in order to stay in. That includes applying for FEMA rental assistance if eligible or if their home is deemed safe by FEMA, moving back home and leveraging community resources as needed. Those who are still trying to find a new home with FEMA disaster aid can stay until the program ends May 11. This Friday is the deadline for all flood victims to apply for help from FEMA. The Small Business Administration's Flood Recovery Center also closes this Friday. From National City, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. San Diego leaders are in Washington, D.C. this week to address some key issues impacting our region and one of the biggest, the sewage from the Tijuana River polluting U.S. waters and the air. San Diego regional leaders are expected to convey support for the Environmental Protection Agency's $630 million approach to the border sewage crisis. All of this is happening because of millions of gallons of raw sewage flowing from the Tijuana River into the U.S. waters. Data suggests even if you're not getting in the water, you might be breathing in toxic particles from the ocean mist. There's also concern that Navy SEALs may be training in contaminated water near the Silver, Silver Strand and Coronado. Since February, San Diego representatives have been urging the Navy to address those concerns. The failure of our sewage plant is becoming a national security issue. There are other meetings happening in D.C. as well, including several surrounding the Otay Mesa East point of entry that is currently under construction. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, as we head through the afternoon, we're going to see more sunshine across the county. Mid 60s to the coast, upper 60s inland, little breezy onshore wind. Mountains and deserts will be a little breezy and mostly sunny for the next couple days that we're going to warm up. When, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, mainly low 70s at the coast. By Thursday, more clouds onshore flow returns and then we're going to cool down a little bit for Thursday and Friday. For the inland valleys, the warming trend tomorrow and Wednesday will put us closer to 80 degrees inland. But then Thursday, Friday, we cool back down and so far it's looking dry heading into the weekend. Your 10 day forecast is coming up. Thank you. New parking meters are coming to the East Village. We'll tell you when and where and why next. 
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 are teaming up to make a positive impact in our community with Local Impact Grants, a grant challenge powered by Comcast NBC Universal. Local Impact Grants awards unrestricted funding to local nonprofit organizations making a difference by tackling everyday problems. Learn more about the program and submit your entry at NBC7.com slash Local Impact Grants. Applications must be received by April 19th. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. New parking meters are coming to the East Village. Crews started installing new parking meters along several blocks downtown Park Boulevard West and then Island Avenue as well. City leaders say they will be in effect from 10 in the morning to 8 at night for $1.25 per hour. There's also a two hour time limit. The city hopes the meters will make it easier for visitors to find parking. To see a full map of where these new meters are located, you can visit our website, NBC7.com. One South Bay school was just honored in a really big way by the California Department of Education. Corky McMillan Elementary was awarded the Purple Star designation, which recognizes schools that cater to military families and their hardships. NBC 7's Nicole Gomez has that story from Otay Ranch. Well, it was a fun celebration on campus this morning for students and staff. You can see they have these purple ribbons all over campus. So this designation is something the school is very proud of. They really do show a lot of pride in the military and are, are proud of the military community in the school. Corky McMillan Elementary in Otay Ranch is now officially a Purple Star School, an honor given by the California Department of Education. The program seeks to reduce the burden on military students and families by publicly designated schools that meet certain requirements. McMillan has 17% military families, a dedicated counselor, and a military liaison. But beyond the stats, parents and students say it's more about a feeling of community. That's what makes McMillan so special is that right away you start connecting with other military families and you just feel a little bit at home when you're not home, if that makes right. sense. I have a lot of friends that are in the military. Most of the school is military, so I'm able to give them tips and help them out because they're going through the feelings I've been through. McMillan is the first school in the Chula Vista Elementary School District to receive the Purple Star designation. Reporting in Otay Ranch, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. We love our service members and their families. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Farveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, more clearing through the afternoon, mid 60s at the coast, upper 60s inland mountains, around 60 degrees, deserts near 80. And then we're going to be mostly clear and pretty chilly by tomorrow morning. So you'll notice those clear skies tomorrow. We'll be warming up Tuesday and Wednesday. By Thursday and Friday, we cool back down. And then over the weekend, looking dry. I don't see any big weather systems anytime soon. Your weekend looks fantastic. Temperatures will start rebounding a little bit more. Mountains and deserts warming the next few days, but then cooling as we head towards the end of the week with a nice weekend in the forecast. Thank you, Sheena. Heads up for you, if you're heading up north this evening, get ready for some slow going. Sections of Interstate 5 near Carlsbad are shutting down. Caltrans says all northbound lanes along the 5 freeway between Carlsbad Village Drive and State Route 78 will be closed from 1130 tonight to 430 tomorrow morning. Sandag says maintenance crews will finish placing an overhead sign structure there. Caltrans says a detour route will be set up for drivers along Carlsbad Village Drive and El Camino Real. And another shutdown to tell you about a sinkhole has formed on the on ramp to the 805 connector from State Route 54. This is going west. It happened about 3 a.m. this morning and the on ramp has been closed ever since. There's some video from this morning. You can see Caltrans on scene there addressing the damage to the area. No estimate as to when the ramp will be back open, but we will of course keep you updated on our newscast at 4, 5 and 6 p.m. and also as well on NBC7.com. More coverage account on there on the website NBC7.com. Thanks for watching.